And I guess I've been provoked because of the number of experiences that I continue to have with the realization that people have sometimes been professed believers for years and have still not grown up into Jesus Christ. I was up in Seattle recently and in the middle of the weekend a lady came to me and she said, could you help me? I said, well, that's what I'm here for. She said, I have a serious problem. I said, well, are you a Seventh-day Adventist? She said, well, yes. And so that gives me great confidence as I hear your response. She said, well, I've joined a little offshoot church. I said, okay. She said, I've been a believer for 25 years, but I've never been baptized. I said, well, if you don't mind me correcting you, you have not yet become a believer. Because the Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized. So by confessing to me, that you've never been baptized, you're actually confessing that you have not yet entered into belief. So let's get that point crystal clear. She said, well, I've been in the church for 25 years, and now I've joined a group that claims to have great light. I said, should I start praying for your soul or what? She said, well, in our church we practice public confession and every Sabbath morning you must stand up and confess the sins that you've committed during that week I said well it sounds like confession to me and she said I'm in trouble I said why are you such a big sinner she said because this week I did something so bad that when I stood up and confessed it, the elders said to me, Sister, you have lost salvation. I said, well, I can hardly wait to hear what you've done. To lose salvation is a big deal, isn't it? And I'm thinking to myself, she must have trampled on Jesus. And his grace, that's how you lose salvation. I said, what did you do if you don't mind me asking? She said, I was driving through downtown Seattle. And I've got to admit, the traffic in Seattle is horrendous. And she said, and this guy cut me off. I said, well, how unusual. And as he cut me off, she said, I swore at him under my breath. Oh, I said, that's terrible. And she said, when I confessed this, the elders told me that I had lost salvation. And she said, this is the second week in a row that I have lost salvation. Oh, I said, I can hardly wait to find out what you did the week before. Oh, she said, it was terrible much worse than cursing under your breath. I said, well, lay it on me. What did you do? She said, it's so bad I can hardly talk about it. But when I confessed it, the elders came to me again and they told me that I had lost salvation for another week. I said, this has to be very big. She said, this is very big. I said, so what did you do? She put her head down again. Oh, she said, it's, it's hard for me to talk about it. I said, lay it on me. Believe me, I have heard it all. She said, well, two weeks ago, I ate a piece of cheese. I said, that is absolutely disgusting. You must be unclean. I'm not even sure I can sit near you and talk with you. 
you ate a piece of cheese and you lost salvation. And I said to this woman, how long did you say you've been connected with the church? She said about 25 years. And you know what I said to myself, don't you? In 25 years, she's still a babe when it comes to knowing the plan of salvation, the love of God, and what it means to grow up into maturity in Jesus Christ. She's blown by every wind that blows. I said to her, you know, I had a baptism here in the church this morning. The water is still, I was about to say warm, but the heater hadn't worked, so I appreciate the coldness of the water. But I said, the water's still in the font. If you would like to enter into belief this afternoon, we could begin with your baptism. Because I'm going to share with you something that will blow you away. How you can grow up into Jesus so you're not blown about by every wind that comes along. And we opened the word together and she saw the wonders of the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. She said, could I have the baptism in the morning so that my daughters could be present? I said, of course. The pastor in the church there in Seattle told me that the daughters have also just been baptized. And I said to this woman, I will baptize you on condition that you never again set foot in a church that is basing salvation upon eating a piece of cheese and not on the blood and the life of Jesus Christ. How's your faith this morning?